On April the 2nd, the team did sign wide receiver LaVisca Chenault Jr. Uh, to a one-year league minimum deal. It's a veteran minimum, pardon me, that is fully guaranteed. The former Jacksonville Jaguar and Carolina Panther signs a one-year deal. He will factor in on the kick returns under the new NFL rules that are heavily influenced by the XFL's kick returns um, and how much they imply, employ pardon me, a two-returner system. Chanel's very interesting. I mean, he was really a big gadget type player for uh, the Colorado Buffaloes in his college time. Uh, had some big plays when he was healthy for Carolina last year, whether it was rushing or in the kick return game. And does have that dynamic sort of ability that you're looking for in a guy that wants to return kicks or that you want to return kicks um, or be able to mix in around uh, on the field, whether it's finding plays for him that just get the football in his hands, uh, getting him into the return game and using the return game as an asset to your football team and helping your offense out, uh, or if it's just adding someone else who can tote the rock. So interesting there to see him get signed by Seattle. Not exactly surprised, um, considering how that hasn't been necessarily the biggest strong suit for Seattle and uh, someone who was a primary returner for them last year, DJ Dallas, having signed uh, with the Arizona Cardinals in the offseason. So Chenault will fill a role there for Seattle, at least for this one-year deal that he's signed to. There are a few things that the team is looking at in terms of free agency that they haven't made a move on yet. The team is looking to sign a veteran guard of some sort. Uh, there's, they've been tied to a guard like Lakin Thompson, who spent time, Tomlinson, pardon me, Lakin Tomlinson, that is, who spent time with the Detroit Lions and the San Francisco 49ers, uh, former Chicago Bear Cody Whitehair. They're really looking for an established veteran guard that they can insert into one of those positions, considering that they've lost Damian Lewis, uh, Gabe Jackson's been gone, um, you know, Evan Brown has gone at the center position as well. They did bring in Nick Harris to play in the center position uh, or, or compete there with Olu Olu Atimi. Um, so uh, I believe Phil Haynes is still a free agent. I don't know if they're going to bring him back or if they would have. They would have done so already. Uh, Greg Van Rotten is also a, a player to be uh, looking at here. Uh, he was set to visit the team on April 3rd. He was in training camp with Seattle way back in the season of 2014, but was released in the preseason uh, prior to the – uh, regular season roster he was the highest rated Raiders offensive lineman in terms of overall blocking grade last season for them uh, via pro football focus starting in all 17 games for Seattle so I mean you're looking for a guard solid blocking uh, grade there for him and durability starting all 17 games those are two positive things but at this current moment by the time that you're seeing this the Seahawks haven't signed anybody in terms of the veteran guard position um to fill that sort of role that they're looking to plug right now. Um, we go over here to the other uh, piece of news that is legitimate and not just something that they're looking at. April 13th, the team did announce that they've signed Joey Lane to serve as the team's new vice president of football administration. Lane had previously served as the salary cap analyst for the Green Bay Packers. He now replaces Matt Thomas, who left the Seattle organization after 11 seasons. Lane will essentially manage the team's salary cap. A uh, few players that have come uh, from Green Bay in recent years have gone on to be sort of salary cap wizards. Uh, there's a gentleman with the Tennessee Titans right now that fills that sort of role as well. So it'll be interesting to see what Lane does. A lot of what Thomas did in his time with the Seahawks involved in negotiating contracts uh, and working with the salary cap. So, you know, obviously if you can use the salary cap to your advantage and find ways around it uh, and add more talent to your football team, then you're going to be better in the NFL. You know, you get some sort of advantage. So you're hoping that Lane is able to do something like that for the Seahawks um, during his tenure in here in Seattle. So 